Hello and welcome to the Maya Toe Belt. This is Michael. Today we talk about uh, Snap to Curve. Snap to Curve is pretty simple if you know how to do it. If you're new to Maya, it can be kind of frustrating dealing with the Snap to Curve function because it's a little bit, a little bit unintuitive to, on how it works essentially, but once you know it, it's easy. So let's create, uh, let's create a curve. I'm going to go Create CV Curve Tool. I'm just going to drag a curve around. Doesn't really matter. Hit Enter. So we have this curve. I'm going to hide the grid. And now I'm going to create, say, a uh, polygon sphere. I'll just create a little sphere like that. So let's say I want my sphere to run along this curve. Up here in the top of the UI, you'll see the snapping buttons, which are indicated with these little magnet icons. And the second one here is snap to curve. So you click it, it'll toggle on. Click it again, it toggles off. There also is a hotkey. If you hold down the C button or the C key on your keyboard, hold it down, you'll see that my snap to curve button toggles on, let go, and it toggles off. So if I toggle it on, I just click it, and then say I left click on my sphere and try to move it to my curve, you see it's not snapping at all. And if I select the curve, it's just highlighting the curve. So how do you get this thing to snap? Well, what you need to do is hold the middle mouse button and drag on the curve. I know it's not exactly obvious, but that's how it works. So you middle mouse click on the curve. And I just clicked, and nothing happened yet. But it has to, you have to actually move the mouse a little bit so it registers some movement, and now it'll snap to the curve. And now you'll see my I'm still holding it down, and you see it's running along this curve. And as I get close to this part of the curve, it'll snap over there depending on where you are on the curve with your middle mouse button. Mouse is up here, mouse over here, and just snaps to it like that. So this works for more than just NURBS curves. It also works for uh, NURBS isoparms, like on the surface of a NURBS object. You go to create NURBS uh, sphere. Grab my little polygon sphere again. I'm going to click this button to show wireframe on shaded, that's what this is right here. So now I can see my little isoparms, these blue lines that are on my sphere. Again, if I middle click and drag, I'm dragging along these isoparms on the nerve surface. And we can also use this on polygon edges as well. If we're going to create polygon primitives cube. Let's say I grab my little sphere, middle mouse click and drag on an edge and it will go from one point to the other along this edge on the polygon cube. And again, snap the curve is, is toggled on all this time. That's why it's working. If I turn off the toggle and minimize click and drag, it doesn't snap anymore. I hold down the C key, minimize click and drag. While I hold C, it will act just as if it was toggled on because I'm holding down the C button, which is the shortcut for snap the curve. So this works not just for objects, but also components. So let's see if I uh, scale my polygon cube up a little bit. We can right click on the cubes, the sphere. Sorry, polygon sphere. Right click on the sphere, select vertex. And you'll see it turns blue and all the little points, little purple dots for each vertex on the sphere. I can select one of them. I can move it individually, but also hold down the C key middle mouse click and drag, I can snap that point along this edge of this polygon cube or along this isoparm of the sphere, whatever I might need at the time. What you also, you also can do is snap it to an edge that it is part of, on the object it's part of. If I middle mouse click and drag on this edge, I can drag it along like this. If I can select this point, middle mouse click and drag, it'll drag along that point, even though that edge is a part of this uh, vertex's uh, positioning, it'll retain, like I can't go past where the vertex started, but it'll retain that length along that edge as it moves with snap to curve. One way this could be helpful is, say if I select this vertex on this cube, and I actually want this vertex to be further down this edge than it is. If I hold down the C key, middle click and drag, it'll run along that edge so I can move this 
point I'll forward down this edge to where I want it to be and it will retain that position along that edge as opposed to moving outward or inward from it. So that can be handy depending on what you're doing. You can also do this with multiple points. If I have these two uh, polygon vertexes, vertices selected at once, hold down the C key, little click and drag, you see they both kind of converge on this edge and snap to it. If you hold down the D key, while you have components selected, so you say I hold it down. This is the pivot mode, a pivot editing mode, I should say. Hold down D, and you see I can move the pivot point of these vertices, the, the selection I have. You see I have a couple little circles around. If I click this blue circle, it changes to my, my movement gizmo, so I can rotate uh, my rotation gizmo, I should say, so I can rotate my pivot if I needed to. Click it click it again, it goes back to the movement of the pivot, like this. Select them both again, hold down D. And this blue circle up here, if I click it, you'll notice that my pivot point of the components is permanently moved. If I click it again, and then I select the components, the pivot point of the components uh, is averaged amongst their positions. So for example, select these two vertices again, hold D, and then I click this little circle up here, and let's say I move the pivot point, and I middle mouse click and hold C and D at the same time, I can run my pivot point along this edge to be over here, for example. And I let go, and because I click that little blue circle, the pivot point of my selection is now over here as opposed to average between the two. But this works now for the whole object. So any component I select, that pivot point for the, that, that component has been moved. So this can be handy if you hold the W key, which is a shortcut for the move tool. While you're holding W, left click and hold, and you have keep spacing turned on, like so. So keep spacing is checked. So now my selection, my component selections, pivot points over here, hold down the C key, middle click and drag, and now I run along this edge, but my point stays over there. And that's because I have keep spacing turned on. So it's keeping that space between the pivot point and the component, holding down the C key, and curve snapping it along an edge, and that space between the two stays uh, where it is. So that can be useful in certain situations, hopefully Hopefully it's not too confusing. And if you want it to go back, hold down the D key, click that blue circle again, and then anytime you select a component, the, the uh, pivot point will be averaged between the two again. So that's snap the curve essentially, plus a little bit of information about component uh, pivot point movement. Uh, hopefully you learned a little bit and you enjoyed the video. Please let me know if you have any questions or requests, comments. I definitely appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.